Bravo, Skip. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Patty Bryan, and I have the honor and pleasure of being worship associate today. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Greater Naples, UUCGN. In truth, often we refer to ourselves as simply UU. There's a certain wisdom in saying UU that represents more than just a letter in the alphabet said twice. U is a second person pronoun. You and you and you and you. You may be longtime members or recent members or soon to be members. Your first time visitors or frequent visitors or you're watching us online. For the newest of you, we are especially glad that you've come or found us online. All of you honor us with your presence. We want to make you feel welcome in this community as we seek peace, justice, and love. Not just as future behavior, but as we live our lives now, day to day, in this world. This is a task that we pursue with intellectual and spiritual growth, guiding, nurturing, and inspiring our way. Today, Skip Lundborg and I will focus on volunteerism. We will present some general information about volunteering, but the main focus is really on you. You're the ones that make things happen. You are the ones that provide real presence to the aspirations that we claim to have. As we enter this time of worship, we ask that you take a deep intentional breath. I, I have one more announcement. Uh, Sean is sick today, so every place where it says Sean's singing, he's not. Uh, important announcement. And now, let's listen to the morning's prelude. <laughs>
there is nothing you need to do in order to be welcome here. No right beliefs or proof of citizenship. No eternal optimism or clarity of conviction. No boundless courage or endless expertise. You do not need to know what brought you here or how you will solve the problem that you've been turning over in your mind countless times. Your bills do not have to be paid, and your checkbook may be a mess. Your children may have been up half the night. Your hearing aids may not be working, and your knees may be creaking. You do not need to be already perfect or even halfway. To belong in this circle where grace meets us as we are, but does not leave us as we were, where love resides in each of us and yet is somehow more than all, where life still pulses and rages and heals and transforms, creating us and this day anew once again. Come, let us worship together. I invite you to join in the responses of the chalice lighting, in the light of truth, the warmth of community, and the fire of commitment we gather this day. May the flame we now kindle be to us a symbol of the unity we seek. Mm -hmm. Safety matters are very effective, you see? <laughs> Thank you, Patty. I invite you to rise if you are willing and able and singing our opening hymn, number 86 in the gray hymnal, Blessed Spirit of My Life. For a very long time, I have been impressed by you, the people of you, you. Your vitality, your energy, your enthusiasm are all infectious. There are so many activities going on here and around us that at times it's overwhelming. I have for some time 
wanted to be able to find a setting in which I can reflect to you the reality I experience. I'm talking about the time you give, the volunteering you do on behalf of this congregation. You truly are the energy, the engine that makes you, you go. And today is the day I get to celebrate you. I will have relatively little to say, but I hope your experience of this service will make visible and clear to you why I value you so highly. Let us remain seated for our centering hymn, number six in the gray hymnal, as long as I have breath. to Abby and Sean on their new home, and a day of relaxation a bit for Sean to catch up. This Sunday, as every Sunday, we pay attention to the joys and sorrows that we carry as we come to this place. I was reminded this morning, some of you will remember, Garrison Keeler and his Prairie Home Companion. He opened each episode about a town called Lake Wobegon by saying, it's been a quiet week in Lake Wobegon. Um, Garrison Killer was not living in our world. <laughs> Things have been as hectic as ever. But we set that part of the world aside for a few moments to pay attention to us. So I'll be moving among you with the microphone. I ask if you have something to express as a joy or concern. Just stand up, give us your name, and tell us what's on your heart today. Let me make sure this is working while I come back here. Dick. I'm uh, Dick Mackin, and I had the great pleasure of watching the Olympics, which started uh, yesterday. And uh, they're on NBC, and uh, they're on all day, so you can turn, tune in, and you see um, the most amazing stuff. I saw field hockey, I saw volleyball, um, soccer, 
And then in the evening, they have a very good uh, recap of all the major events of the day. And the, the swimming uh, competitions were extraordinary. So these are the best athletes in the whole world there for you to watch. And I strongly advise you to do that. It's a way of really taking your mind off of all the chaos that we live in. Thank you. Thank you, Dick. Commercial for NBC. <laughs> Hi, my name is Judy Freiberg. Um, one year ago, I had an announcement. It was a joy that I was, I had just turned 74. So guess what my announcement is? <laughs> and so I have, uh, at that time, I made a request that you all for my birthday present come out and sign the Right to Clean Water petition. This time, I'm going to ask you to come out and meet our guest and our friend, Carrie Lerner. Carrie is running for Congress in Congressional District 19 against Byron Donalds, and I would love you all to meet her. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Welcome. David. I'm David Sleeper, and I just became the co-chair of the membership committee, which is a great honor. And I wanted to talk about something I suggested, a banner behind the greeting table that says, you are UUCGN, and that's exactly what Reverend was talking about, about volunteerism. We have such gifts, amazing gifts, and just a little bit of help here and there. We could change not, not only the world and the country and the state and this community, but we can change each other for the better. And there are two members right now I'd like to acknowledge that recently became members in the last couple of years. Jim Reeves and Chris Rapp. They are absolutely outstanding people who are, I see volunteering on the, in the garden area. Uh, I saw Chris uh, blow, blowing the leaves off the entrance to our sanctuary this morning. I see them helping in hospitality. Those are two outstanding volunteers. And, and they just, they did it on their own. So if you see something you're interested in, join in. You're all welcome because you are UUCGN. Thank you. Thank you, David. I'm already in here, so guess what's happening? I have the microphone now. Good morning. Yeah, whoever said whoa -oh is correct, okay? Um, but good morning. I'm glad to be in this community with you all today. Uh, I feel very welcome here, and I'm grateful for that. So my joy is for you people, to be honest with you. Is it corny? Yes, it is. But it's just also the truth. I am grateful for each and every one of you. Have I met each and every one of you? Maybe, maybe not. But there's always coffee hour. So hopefully I'll see you there if I haven't seen you yet. And thank you for listening to my joyous ramble. Thank you, Camilla. There are some things about which we can speak and some things about which we remain uncertain enough that we dare not speak them aloud. Some joys, but also some sorrows. People we love, people we miss. All of those are present with us in these moments. Meditation for today is called For You by Walt Whitman. The sum of all reverence I add up in you, whoever you are. All architecture is what you do to it 
when you look upon it. The sun and the stars that float in the open air, the apple-shaped earth and we upon it. The wonder everyone sees and everyone else they see. And the wonders that fill each moment of time forever. All music is what awakens from you when you are reminded by the instruments. We consider Bibles and religious divine. I do not say that they are not. I say they have all grown out of you and may grow out of you still. Will you seek afar off? You surely come back at last to things best known to you. Finding the best or as good as the best. Happiness, knowledge, not in another place, but this place. And not in another hour, but this hour. Some time for silent reflection.
Patty and I are now going to share a reading called Why Volunteer, which ex expresses some of the benefits of being a volunteer. Make connections. Meet new people with similar interests to yours. Gain fulfillment. Gain a sense of purpose and or accomplishment. Learn skills. Learn new practical and social skills. Be happy. Studies show that volunteering combats depression. Become self-confident. Volunteering is a great way to improve self-confidence. Improve your health. Studies show that volunteers have a lower mortality rate than non-volunteers. Strengthen community. Volunteers make community stronger by addressing the local needs. Empower others. Volunteers teach new skills and help others with resources. Be civically responsible. Learn about the causes you support and address community problems. Make a difference. On the front lines or the back office, volunteers make a difference every single day. Gain perspective. Volunteers become more self-assured. And have fun. Even working on tough issues, enjoy meeting new people and serving others. This congregation is served by a wonderful staff. Of that, there is no doubt. But for these next few minutes, we will focus on you, the committees of volunteers who in turn initiate, organize, and create the many events that you and I participate in and enjoy. Today, I want you to see who those people are. These are the volunteers who make you, you work. There's a lot of ground to cover, and I think many of you will be surprised at how many volunteers we have working on our behalf. So I need to ask for your participation. When your committee is named, I ask that all of its members and subcommittee members stand if you are able, raise a hand up high, if not, so that we can see you and recognize you. Many of you will be standing many times. <laughs> Good for you. We may be tempted to applaud each time, but I, I can assure you that your hands will be exhausted by the time we're finished. So I suggest we wait till the end and acknowledge the whole of our volunteer world. So here we go. Board of Trustees, Chris Callum, Chair. Come on, stand up. Come on, Beth. I'm just listening to Chair, but I want the members to stand as well. Okay. Endowment Fund Board, Jane Graham. Ah, okay. Yes. Aesthetics Committee, Ann Fullerton. Are the members of the Aesthetics Committee here? Adult Enrichment, Ann Fisher and Kathy Gorski, co chairs. Caring Committee. Joan Leary and Adrian Caddy, co-chairs. There, there are several members of that committee. All right, that's what I'd like to see. Thank you all. Memorial Service and Weddings, Ann Bergeson and Adrian Caddy, co-chairs. Adrian, where are you? Okay, there you go. Forum, Ellen Propokow, chair. 
Hospitality Committee, Stephanie Perkins and Bill Halbrick co-chairs. Where are you? Where are you? There you go. Come on. Come on. Don't be shy, people. Membership Committee, John Pipkin, Chair. John is, ah, John is patrolling the hallway right now. Music Committee, Steve Espinosa, Chair. Hi, Cheryl. Jack. Thank you. Safety and Security, John Pipkin, Chair. Still sitting in the hallway. Hey, John. Uh, other members of this, the committee? Yes. Thank you. Social Activities Committee, you'll be hearing more about that from Patty toward the end of the service. That is a variety of subcommittees that, that uh, you'll hear about. Social Justice Committee, Jerry Arns and Cheryl English, co-chairs. Weekend Meals Committee, Missy Cowan, Chair. That's it. Thank you. Green Sanctuary, Joan Benz. Members of the committee here? Worship Associates, Janet Hoffman and Joanne Husky, co-chairs. <laughs> Youth Religious Exploration, Patty Friedberg, Chair. Those of you who've been working with that with the uh, education program. Please stand. I know you have Steve. Others are yes. Cheryl, Adrian. Thank you. Finance committee: Jake Cockcroft, Mike Kirko, Susan Music. Mike, stay up, Mike. Stay up. Facilities Committee, Mike Kirko. <laughs> Gardens and Grounds, Gary Pojunk and Bill McCormick, co-chairs. I'm waving from behind the glass out there. Members of the Nominating Committee? Personnel Committee, John Pipkin. He is, is actually in the room. John has, hi John, thank you. Those are our committees. Can we celebrate them? <laughs> As you can see, it takes many folks to make UU work a place we can call home. And I should point out that there's always room for you. Most of these committees are glad to accept people who share an interest in their activities and want to help out. There's always a slot. For now, these are the folks who serve us. A regular feature of our Sunday morning greeting 
directs us toward living our values out in public. That is going to be the focus for the next part of this service. Through my years, I have been continually impressed by the myriad ways you find to provide service even beyond the work of this congregation. Whenever I have been bold enough to stick my nose into community associations or projects, I find you're already there. Someone from UUCGN is already there, hard at work, wondering where I've been, what took me so long to catch on. For several years, I've been wishing for a way to make that wider volunteering visible, and I have found a way. And the thing is, it won't work without you. This requires you not to be shy. It means that you are willing to name the work you do and the projects of your life. This is not about boasting or bragging. It is making a witness, giving face to what it is that you value, where it is you are willing to put yourself. Patty and I will both have microphones. We ask that you tell us your name and tell us what it is beyond these walls that you have chosen as a way to be living your values out in public. And I have a starter to give you a clue. Uh, I was talking with Janet Hoffman, who could not be here this morning. And here's what she says about where she volunteers. She's been supporting people with attention deficit disorder and parents of children with attention deficit disorder, ADHD as it's called. She struggled with a great deal of confusion to get her son diagnosed and treated. And for 24 years, Janet has been volunteering there. More recently, she became an active volunteer in the League of Women Voters, which provides a source of friendships. It has also promoted her personal growth with learning skills involved in teamwork. Now it's your turn. First part is easy, just raise your hand. Who is willing to break the ice today? Thank you. I am Georgia Hopeful, and I have to thank um, Janet for including me in the League of Women Voters, of which I am now a member. Thank you. I'm sorry for the millions of you viewing at home. Uh, you can't see all this, but it's beautiful. Um, I have found out that men can also join the League of Women Voters, and I have joined, and it is, I think, the most dynamic organization that I have ever met in Naples, and so I urge others to join as well. There are a dynamo of ideas and ambition and work, and uh, they also have very nice meetings with, uh, with good food, and, uh, and, and interesting programs. So uh, I, I, uh, I urge others to join. Oops. Uh -oh. Hi, uh, I'm, my name is Bill McCormick. Um, we have Emerson Academy, which just ended its three week program. Our mission is to give equal opportunities to top colleges for Students, public school students, mainly from populations that have endured traditional uh, historic patterns of racial, economic, and ethnic uh, discrimination. This year we just had, th we have about 35 kids, 11 rising seniors, 
And I would just read something by Bill Russell, who was the one of the greatest basketball players from Boston. I was a Philadelphia fan. But Bill Russell, he, he, after he retired, became a great mentor to minority kids. And one thing he said is that the children are not our children. And they're the nation's children. And I regard all of these kids in this community that are underserved coming from really tough circumstances as our children. And we do the best we can to get them into top schools, and we've done a pretty good job. Yes, you have. Thank you, Phil. I know there are more. Here we are. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Morell, <laughs> and I got interested in politics by joining the League of Women Voters in Owensboro, Kentucky. And what was eye-opening was to go to all the different neighborhoods in our town of 50,000 or plus, and uh, going and seeing how other people lived. It was eye-opening, and it changed me. It's very powerful. Join the League of Women Voters and talk to people. Thank you. Hello, my name is Lagaya Bibi, and I want to talk a little bit about how I live my values and my work. I work for an organization that uh, provides merit-based scholarships for U.S. kids to go study abroad and learn languages and learn those really crucial intercultural communication skills to learn about how other people live in the world and to learn about themselves. Um, this organization, uh, the scholarships are funded by the U.S. State Department, um, so they're all funded by you as taxpayers, um, and they're really special programs, and I love talking about them. Um, so if you ever want to talk to me about them, I'd love to tell you more. We have not heard uh, today about the NAACP, uh, but there are definitely members here who uh, are active in that. Uh, I'm Jill Augustine. I don't have a group as such. Um, uh, where I live, I go and visit the care center because many of those people don't have anybody uh, to visit. And, um, and then also, the people in the, in the whole thing there uh, because uh, of not having, being lonely. And, um, and I have a group that goes with me. Um, so that's what I do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm Diane Rahman, and I'm a member of the NAACP, and I do as many activities as I possibly can with them to raise awareness and support their activities. Thank you. Any others? Well, it sounds like there's room for you in a lot of places. Uh, it's good for you to volunteer. Uh, good for good for your, your mind, your heart, ways to find out more information about the wider community of which we are but a part. So think of it. And if uh, any of these opportunities that you heard about today interest you, talk to the person who brought it up. Find out more. I have never volunteered with an AV group.
Yep. UUCGN's leaders, both volunteers and staff members, work diligently throughout the year to be careful and attentive stewards of the congregation. Countless meetings, reports, documents, budgets are necessary to maintain the health of an organization. The gifts that you made to our weekly offering or through your annual pledge represent far more than just lines on a spreadsheet. Your contributions are a tangible commitment to the mission and the vision of this congregation. Every time you give, you renew this commitment. And as a result, your support is entwined in everything we believe in and uh, everything that we do here together. This is its own special gift. In this spirit of truth, of trust and generosity, we gratefully accept the morning's offering. If you wish to send in a contribution, the information that you need is on the screen. And because this is the last Sunday of the month, it is a split the plate Sunday. So half of the plate offering is donated to the work of a selected organization. And today, this month's donation will go to Yes on Four, a statewide coalition working to pass Amendment 4. That amendment would end the, bore, uh, the ban on abortions in Florida after, after six weeks and allow women to have their reproductive health choices restored. Before we get to sing our closing hymn, there are some activities that I'd like to highlight. The kids in Youth Religious Exploration 
will be experiencing spirit play, movement, and dance, using as their inspiration children's books about famous African-American musicians. I checked the newsletter to find out uh, what's going on, and I honestly was totally blown out of the water. While some of the following activities are not meeting in the summer, there are still a whole lot of opportunities to get together with our friends here at UU, even in the summer. Coffee house, yoga, tai chi, garden crew, book clubs, both fiction and nonfiction. The, some of these are uh, not in the summer, but a lot of them are. Uh, book clubs, both fiction and nonfiction, green sanctuary, aging wisely, welcoming women, dining around the world in Naples, first Friday, retired old men eating out, <laughs> circle dinners, chalice circles, drum circles, lots of circles, choir, concert series, pavilion concert series, and film fans are just a handful of the many, many, many activities that go on here. So read the newspaper to find out what's happening when, and you will be glad you did. And now, let's rise in body or spirit to sing our closing hymn, We Would Be One. Number 318 in the gray hymnal, and the words will be on the screen. I am awed by your giving and your talents. So I'm hard pressed to find a worthwhile rhyme to say thank you for all of your time. So I'll close with this as we go on our way. Find and make for yourself, you know, a wonderful day. <laughs> <laughs>